In this video, we are going to solve the CBSE class 12th geography sample question paper. We'll go through each and every question and I will also tell you the chapter names from where these questions have been taken so that it's easy for you to dig deep for more references. Alright then, let's get right into it. There are 30 questions in this paper and you will get 3 hours to complete it. The total marks allotted for this paper is 70. The questions in this paper are divided into 4 sections. The first one is multiple choice questions and then you have short answer questions, after that long answer questions and finally map related questions. In this video, we will cover section A which has 18 multiple choice questions. Let's go to the first question. There is a choice but I will explain both of them. Pause the video and look at the question first. The question says which one of the following is the largest linguistic group of India? There are two books for class 12 geography. Part 1 is the Fundamentals of Human Geography and the Part 2 is India, People and Economy. This question is from Part 2 book, Chapter 1, Population. In this chapter, if you go to the 10th page, you will find the table called Classification of Modern Indian Languages. You will find the percentage distribution of Indian languages. So Indo-Aryan language is the largest linguistic group of India. This language is spoken by 73% of the population. Almost whole of North India speaks this language. After Indo-Aryan language, it is the Dravidian language which is the second largest linguistic group with 20%. Almost entire South India speak this language. I have a separate video on this table where I have explained properly in depth with map. If you are interested, please check the video, I will put the link in the description. Anyways, let's go to the second part of this question. It is asking which one of the following periods had witnessed rapid growth of population. Even this question is from the same chapter. It falls under the topic growth of population. In this topic, the growth of Indian population has been divided in four phases. You can also look at the table which shows the decadal growth rate in India. You can easily see that option C is the answer. From 1951 to 1981, the population growth has increased from 13.31% to 24.66%. And the reason behind that is simply that the birth rate went higher than the death rate. It was also the post-independence era. Five years plan was just introduced. Then many people from neighboring countries like Pakistan, Tibet, Nepal migrated to India which contributed to population explosion. I have a video on this topic as well. It's called the demographic transition of India. I'll put the link of that video in the description. Have a look at it. Let's go to the second question. It is asking which one of the following is the main reason for male migration in India. Now this question is from part 2 book chapter 2 migration. This question has been directly taken from this chapter and the answer lies in the topic causes of migration. You will see that work and employment have remained the main cause for male migration by 38%. On the next page, you can see a pie chart that shows the reasons for male migration. You can also see another pie chart that shows the reason for female migration. For females, the main reason for their migration is due to marriage. The third question is, identify the country with the highest sex ratio in the world. This question is from part 1 book, chapter 3, population composition. In the chapter, the first topic, sex composition. In that, you will find the highest sex ratio in the world has been recorded in Latvia, which is 1187 females per 1000 males. The sex ratio is the ratio of males to females in a population. If you look at the sex ratio in Latvia for 2020, the number of females are more than males. And if you look at their population by age groups, you will realize that a high mortality rate among men in Latvia is the main reason behind the increase in the female population. And second part of this question is, which one of the following figures represents the working age group of the population? The answer is option D. Even this question is part of chapter 3 population composition, which is the first book of class 12 NCRT geography. In that chapter, if you go to the last topic, occupational structure, the first line says that working population that is women and men of the age group of 15 to 59 take part in various occupations. Let's go to the fourth question. Which one of the following group of cities have been arranged in the sequence of their ranks? The answer is option D. This question has been directly taken from chapter 4, Human Settlements, part 2 book, India, People and Economy. In that chapter, if you go to the topic, classification of towns on the basis of population size, you'll find your answer. 
The second optional question is Palli and Nagla belong to which one of the following rural settlements? So from the question you can easily figure out that this question belongs to which chapter? The words rural settlement indicates that. Anyhow, even this question is from chapter 4, Human Settlements, part 2 book, India, People and Economy. In the chapter, if you go to the topic, Types of Rural Settlement, in that there is a subtopic called Hamleted Settlement. Hamlet means a small human settlement. Under this topic, it is clearly written that sometimes settlement is fragmented into several units, physically separated from each other, bearing a common name. These units are called Panna, Para, Palli, Nagla, Dhani, etc. in various parts of the country. Let's look at the fifth question. Which one of the following is not a push factor? When you look at the words push factor, you must immediately think in terms of migration. Because people migrate from one place to another for better economic and social life. So there will be a push and pull factor. So this question has been directly taken from chapter 2, the world population distribution density and growth. And it is part of the book, Fundamentals of Human Geography. So what is the meaning of push factor? Let's say you stay at a particular place. And now if I have to ask you what are the reasons that will make you go away from this place? And there are many reasons like unemployment, poor living conditions, political turmoil, unpleasant climate, natural disasters, epidemics and socio-economic backwardness. So as per the question, it is asking which one of the following is not a push factor. If you look at the options, unemployment is a factor, epidemic is also a factor, water shortage is also a factor, you don't want to stay at a place where there is no water to drink. So now we are only left with option B. Even medical and educational facilities are important, however, compared to other options in this question, it is not an urgent push factor. The sixth question is, which one of the following is the best description of development? From the word development, you can easily figure out that this question is part of chapter 4, Human Development, of part 1 book, Fundamentals of Human Geography. Even the part 2 book, India, People and Economy has a chapter called Human Development. But if you look at the name of the entire book, India, People and Economy, all the chapters in this book basically talks about the people of India and Indian economy. But the part 1 book, Fundamentals of Human Geography, in this book, the chapters talks about the human part of the geography in a global context. So anyhow, this question is part of chapter 4, Human Development of the part 1 book, Fundamentals of Human Geography. The answer to this question is option C. The first page of the chapter, under the topic Growth and Development, the meaning of the word development has been properly defined. And it says, development occurs when there is a positive change in quality. So the answer is option C. Now let's say even if you didn't know the answer, when you look at all the options, option C talks about the word positive as well as quality in the same context. And there is no other option which does that. With that kind of deductive reasoning, you can tick option C. Let's go to the seventh question. Which one of the following is not a plantation crop? If you see the question, they are talking about crop, agricultural activities, which is also known as primary activities. And we do have a chapter by the name Primary Activities, which is chapter 5 of part 1 book Fundamentals of Human Geography. And it is also a direct question taken from this chapter. The answer to this question is found under the topic Agriculture. Within that there is a subtopic called Plantation Agriculture. In the first paragraph itself you will find your answer. Now when you look at the question they are asking which is not a plantation crop. Plantation crops are basically crops such as coffee, sugar and tobacco which are grown in large quantity, meaning they are plants but they are planted in large scale. And if you look at the option, you will find option C, wheat to be a very odd option. You will find coffee plant, sugarcane plant, you will also find rubber plant. But wheat is a grass. That's how option C is your answer. The eighth question is, which one of the following types of cultivation was developed by European colonists? Even this question is from the same chapter. So you can look up for the answer. But I will tell you the answer by applying a different logic. When we talk about European colonists, we are talking about British, Dutch, Portuguese and French who came to India and colonized it. Not only India, they colonized many other places in the world. If you look at the history of slavery, it was the Europeans who introduced this system. And why they needed slaves? The Europeans needed low-wage labors for their plantations. 
Initially, Europeans were interested in tobacco and sugar plantations. So now when you look at the options, option A says Kolkhoz. The name sounds Russian. Hence, it is a form of farming in the Soviet Union. Option B says mixed farming. It is a system of farming which involves both crops as well as raising livestock. If you read a history, you will realize that British were not interested in farming. Initially, they came as a company to India for trading spice, silk, cotton, tea. And then they began ruling India for profit. They were never interested in farming. In fact, if you recollect, the British forced the Indian farmers to grow indigo because there was a huge demand in Britain for indigo. And indigo is a cash crop. So we know that British ruled India for profit. Option C is viticulture. Now viticulture means cultivation and harvesting of grapes. And grapes are used for producing wine. In India, we do practice viticulture. You will find vineyards in Maharashtra, Karnataka, Telangana, Goa, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, and some parts of Punjab and Kashmir also. Otherwise, if you look at the top wine regions of the world, they are France, Italy, and Spain, which are in Europe. Definitely the Britishers or any other European colonists did not come to India to do viticulture. With that, we are left with option D. And we know that the British exported many Indians in the 19th century as plantation workers. You should read about Indian indenture system, where 3.5 million Indians were transported to various colonies of European past to provide labor, mainly for sugar plantations. The ninth question is, which one of the following does not follow monoculture? Even this question has been taken from the same chapter. If you look at the word monoculture, in that mono means single. That means it is an agricultural practice of producing a single crop, a single plant, and if it is in the case of raising animals, then a single livestock species or breed is raised at a time. The opposite of monoculture is polyculture. Now when we look at the options, so the question says which does not follow monoculture. Your eyes will immediately go to option C because the term mixed farming means growing of crops as well as raising of livestock. By the way, mixed cropping is also known as polyculture. If you look at the other options, option D is dairy farming. Now dairy farming is a type of business which involves production of only milk. Further from milk, many other byproducts are made. But primarily dairy farming means production of milk. That means it comes under monoculture. Option B says plantation agriculture. Under plantation category, you will find sugarcane plant, coffee plant, tea plant, cotton plant, etc. But only one plantation is grown on a large scale area. You will never find sugar and coffee together or cotton and tea together. So plantation agriculture also follows monoculture. And finally, option A is commercial grain farming. That means cultivating grain on a large scale. And the term commercial means it's lucrative, it can earn you profit. So if a crop can fetch you a lot of money, then you would like to grow only that crop, right? And that will again follow the pattern of monoculture. So mixed farming is opposite of monoculture. The tenth question is, which one of the following forms of settlement develops along the side of roads, rivers or canals? Now this question is from chapter 10, Human Settlements of part 1 book, Fundamentals of Human Geography. It is a direct question taken from the chapter. So if you look at a canal, it looks something like this. It's like a straight line. So naturally any settlement around this canal has to be in a straight line. Straight line is also called as linear. That means option B is your answer. A circular pattern of settlement is usually found around lakes, tanks and sometimes the village. A cross-shaped settlement is found at a place where two roads converge. In Hindi, we call those places Chaurasta. A square settlement is formed near a plain area where the civilization has a proper planning in terms of human settlement. The eleventh question is, which one of the following types of economic activities dominates in all rural settlements? Even this question belongs to the same chapter. And the answer is option A, primary activities. Because primary activities involves agriculture, fishing, animal husbandry, forestry, etc. It has always been so since the beginning. People living in the rural areas all over the world are engaged and dependent on various primary occupation. The twelfth question is, the first urban settlement to reach a population of 1 million was? If you look at the option of this question, all the places that are mentioned are not at all in India. That means this question is in global context. 
and I have told you that there are two books in NCERT for class 12 geography. Part 2 deals with India, people and economy and part 1 deals with fundamentals of human geography. So this question is from chapter 10, Human Settlements of part 1 book, Fundamentals of Human Geography. And the answer is option C. London is the first city to reach 1 million population by 1810. Let's go to the 13th question. Identify the landlocked harbour from the followings. In this question, they are talking about a seaport. That means it is related to international trade. Chapter 11 of part 2 book, India, People and Economy is international trade. You will find the answer to this question under the topic, seaports as gateways of international trade. The answer is option A, Vishakapatnam. The 14th question is, which one of the following is the longest national highway of India? If you look at the question, it is talking about national highway. That means road transport. And it is specifically asking about National Highway of India. That means this question is from Chapter 10, Transport and Communication, which is there in Part 2 book, India, People and Economy. The answer to this question can be found under the topic Road Transport. Within that, there is a subtopic National Highway. So the answer is Option B. National Highway 7, presently it is called National Highway 44. It is the longest running National Highway in India. It starts from Srinagar in the north and ends in Kanyakumari in the south. Question number 15. Complete the following table by writing appropriate answer. You can easily figure out by looking at the word communications. So this question is part of chapter 10, Transport and Communication, which is in the part 2 book, India, People and Economy. You will also find a chapter with a similar name, which is chapter 8 in part 1 book. The answer to this question can be found under the topic Communication Networks. There you will find a picture which is the exact copy of this picture. You simply have to look at the picture and fill in the blank. So the answer is Personal Communication and Mass Communication. Let's go to the 16th question. Name the headquarters of Northern Railway Zone of India. The answer to this question is available in the same chapter that is Chapter 10 Transport and Communication which is under part 2 book, India, People and Economy. In that chapter, you go to the topic, Rail Transport. There you will see a table which shows zone-wise Indian Railway's income as well as its headquarters. The headquarters of Northern Railway Zone of India is option C, New Delhi. Question 17th. Land degradation and irrigated areas is caused by which of the following reason? Now this question is part of chapter 5, Land Resources and Agriculture. And it comes under part 2 book, India, People and Economy. The same question is there in this chapter but in a little different form. The same question can also be asked, which one of the following is the main form of degradation in irrigated areas? And the answer is option C, salinization of soil. Salinization of soil means when there is an increase in salt content in the soil. It actually decreases the soil fertility. And the 18th question is, Southwest monsoon in India coincides with which cropping season? So India actually has two monsoons. One is the southwest and the other is the northeast monsoon. The southwest monsoon occurs in the month of June, that is right after summer season. And the northeast monsoon usually occurs between October to December, which is during winter season. Now that you know southwest monsoon is right after summer season in the month of June, that means sowing of seeds begin in the rainy season around July. It is this cropping pattern which is known as Kharif crops. On the other hand, Rabi crops are sown around mid-November during winter season. Even during winter season, many parts of the Indian subcontinent receive rainfall. So both Kharif and Rabi crops are dependent on monsoon. But this question was about southwest monsoon. Now let's talk about Zayed crops. Zayed crops do not rely on monsoons. They are grown in summer season in the long duration between Rabi and Kharif crop season, mainly from March to June. Anyhow, this question is part of Chapter 5, Land Resources and Agriculture, which comes under Part 2 book, India, People and Economy. You can read more about this question in this chapter under the topic, Cropping Seasons in India. So these are the 18 multiple choice questions of this sample question paper. And that also brings us to the end of Section A. In the next video, I'll cover the question of section B, which are subjective in nature and needs to be written in 80 to 100 words. See you in the next video.